All right, boys, it's time. The ultimate destruction of Intel with the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D is finally at hand. As we all know, if you scour the internet, the 7800X 3D is the ultimate gaming CPU. You should buy, 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 buy right now. Philly, links in the video description down below. What are you doing? Why are you wasting time? Ah! However, how much of that is actually true? That's what we're going to be taking a look at here today in this video. If you watched yesterday's live stream, you already have a pretty good idea of how this is going to turn out. There's a few extra surprises added into this video, so even if you did watch that, this is still worth checking out. But uh, if you're not subscribed, make sure you do so, so this way you can catch the live streams every Friday and you can get information before I do the actual video. Uh, if you hit the little join button down below, that gets you access to the Discord, and those guys know even sooner than everybody else. So alrighty guys, this one's for you. I wanted to make sure we had all the information. So this way, if you are looking to build a high-end gaming PC, is the $450 eight core CPU worth the premium? Alrighty guys, so kicking things off with 1440p, 1% low, high preset results. All right, so if we're taking a quick look here, we can see obviously the 5800X 3D does fall behind. But when we take a look at the 13600K with DDR4, not even maxed overclock, just 5.5 gigahertz on that one, we can see that it's basically a nothing burger. It's kind of on a per game basis versus the 7800X 3D. So like The Last of Us is basically a tie. Intel takes The Witcher by a little bit here, which I found very interesting considering this has DDR5 and looking at the 1080p results. Anyways, then you go to Cyberpunk, 13600K is a little bit ahead, and then you have the 7800X 3D takes the lead in Hogwarts, and it's just kind of back and forth. When averaged across all the games, the 5800X 3D comes in with 119 FPS on the 1% low. We have the 13600K coming in second place at 135 FPS, and then we have the 7800X 3D at 137. So basically on par with the 13600K. However, let's take a look at the more interesting results at 1080p. Now here at 1080p, I went ahead and included a stock 7800X 3D. So this is just straight clean BIOS with XMP enabled, and that is all. So taking a look at The Last of Us here, we can see that the 7800X 3D has a pretty good lead over the stock 7800X 3D. And then we have the 13600K basically on par with the out of the box 7800X 3D. We can see The Witcher 3 does take the lead with the 7800X 3D here at 1080p. Once again, like I mentioned before, I believe that's due to DDR5. And then when we go to Cyberpunk, the 13600K actually has a more extended lead than it did at 1440p. So we're starting to see more exaggerated results between these on a game to game basis. However, we can see that it, the trend is relatively the same. Taking a look at the nine game average, we have the 5800X 3D obviously coming in the last place at 127 FPS on the 1% lows averaged across all the games. We have the 13600K coming in at 153 FPS when averaged across all the games. The 7800X 3D stock coming in at 143 FPS on the 1% lows, so 10 FPS behind the 13600K, and the tuned in overclock 7800X 3D coming in at 151 FPS uh, on average across all nine games. So basically a nothing burger with the 13600K. So, yeah, this is obviously due to the fact if you look at the chart, you will see the 7800X 3D is ahead of the 13600K in most games by a little bit. But when it loses, it loses big. So, for example, Modern Warfare 2, the 13600K is significantly ahead. And that helps bring up its average, of course. And then same thing for something like Cyberpunk. So it is a back and a forth. But when the Intel CPU is superior, it's much, much, much faster. Whereas when the AMD CPUs are superior, where's a good example? Like Hogwarts is a pretty good one here. It's a head. That's a solid win. That's a 10 FPS difference there. But it's not as big of a difference as something like 21 FPS over here or a bigger one, 50 FPS in Modern Warfare 2. Well, Alrighty guys, after taking a look at that, it's pretty obvious, no. $450 for an eight core CPU here in 2023, that's not even close to being the fastest, makes no sense in the world. Now, I'm gonna be fair, the 7800X 3D, I had good and bad experiences. 
Let's start with the good. Well, it didn't blow up. That's number one. So it still functions. Number two, it actually worked. I plugged it in, everything worked fine after I did a BIOS flashback. So I had no issues getting everything set up. Tuning in the RAM was both very easy and extremely difficult. So this is both a good and a bad. So going all the way up to 6400, the CPU just went. Uh, once I tried 6600, it said no. So, all right, there we go. I was done, I just had to tune it in. So that was actually very, very nice. Uh, now on the flip side, it took one minute, okay? And apparently this isn't even that bad, but every time I rebooted the system, it would take one minute for the BIOS to retrain the memory every time. And if you've ever tuned memory, you have to restart your system constantly, like hundreds of times. So it literally wasted hours of my life tuning the system in. So at the end of the day, is it worth 5.6% extra performance for a couple extra hours on top of tuning? To be honest, most people would probably say no. And I would agree. Literally the main benefit to buying an X3D chip is that you don't have to tune. You can just use some XMP stuff and you're good to go. So that's one of the key benefits to the 7800X3D. However, once again, I'm just gonna harken back. In 2023, for just an eight core 16 thread CPU, which in reality should be 200-ish. I mean, look at the 5700X, 200-ish dollars. Look at the 12700K, that's a 12 core. That was $220 the other day. Yeah, that's a big, tough pill to swallow there. And speaking of the 12700KF deals that have been going on, you know, they've been $240 over the past couple months many times. I made many posts. And then the other day for Prime Day, uh, they were $220, hitting an all-time low. That's half the price of a 7800X3D and will be pretty much on par with a 13600K. It has more cores, but they clock lower. The 13600K clocks higher, less cores. So it would be pretty much a wash there. So for effectively half of the money, you can just go ahead and buy that and get similar, if not superior performance. That is ultimately the killer here. And on top of that, you also get four extra cores. I mean, that's what really kills this processor is its price. If it came in at 299, which would be effectively the same price of a 13600K, delivering similar gaming performance to a 13600K, delivering similar, it's probably a little worse, but close enough, multi-thread performance as a 13600K, the 7800X3D would actually make some sort of logical sense. However, at this point in time, it simply does not. Now, for a lot of people out there, they're gonna be going, yeah, but it only draws 90 watts or whatever under full load, which is true. So it does draw less power than the 13600K, which under full load would be about 180 watts, so about half the power. But the real benefit that people think from that is, well, you just don't need as much cooling. 100% not true. So I use the uh, 360 millimeter AIO on the 7800X3D and under full load when it was doing the shader compilation for The Last of Us, the CPU was still hitting 82 Celsius while only drawing 90 Watts. So that means under full load, it's going to require a similar cooling solution to a Raptor Lake CPU. So the Raptor Lake CPUs, yes, they draw more power, but they're much easier to cool. So that means the power savings is really all you get, meaning the like $2 a month that you save is it. It's, it's not a benefit in terms of heat, total heat output, unless you're talking about like heat in the room or something. In terms of cooling solution required, it's equal, which is kind of ridiculous when you think about it, but it also makes sense. The final point I really wanna harp on is the fact of my sheer disappointment with this. With all the hype on the internet, I was expecting the CPU to be a little bit faster uh, relative to what it actually is. I was not expecting a half-ass tuned, only 5.5 gigahertz, uh, i5, 13600K, mine does 5.8 gigahertz, by the way. So that's a pretty decent jump. It's not huge, but we're talking few percentage points here and there. That's gonna add a few more on top of the 13600K by just pumping a little bit more power and voltage through it. Then it's also using DDR4 with a half-ass tune. I just did DDR4, uh, 4000, C15, you know, they all do that, right? My chip will do 4266. It takes time to get it in there. So that's another bump that I could have got. 
could also go DDR5, which will be another bump. You see where I'm going? There's another bump on another bump on another bump, which means that in reality, the 13600K is actually a much faster CPU. And I was going to compare this chip to a fully tuned 13700K or a 13900K. So we had best versus best, but there's simply no point. And I really wanted to keep this as my high end test system. But unfortunately, I just can't do it. In good conscience, I can't. Now, for the affiliate clicks and the links and all that sort of stuff, if you still want to buy one of these things, by the way, you know, links are down below. And I'll keep them in there for the people that are like, don't care, I'm going to buy it anyway. But I can't in good conscience recommend this CPU to anybody. Not at its current price point. It's just far too expensive. Unfortunately, I went ahead and returned the CPU already. We're just going to have to wait for 14th gen as that will be the undeniable fastest CPU out there. Even if it is only 200 megahertz faster than what's currently out, that's 200 megahertz faster than what's currently the top of the line. So, all right, guys, if you found this video useful, please click that like button down below. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Uh, do you think it's worth saving a crap ton of money just going with like a $65 motherboard, which by the way, that deal's still going on at this time. You can get a Z690 DDR4 board. For $65, you can get the Tomahawk for $85 with a mail-in rebate. I have two of the Tomahawks, great boards. Um, it's got a better VRM, so I went that route. You can keep your DDR4 if you've got good B-Die. If you don't, well, that's a little bit of a hiccup. A lot of people probably don't want to spend big money on DDR4 nowadays, but you know, by the time you need a new processor, you're going to be on, you know, better DDR5 than what's out here today anyway. So I wouldn't really worry about it if you're going that route. But if you have decent DDR4 3600 C16 kit, you can tune that in pretty good as well. Just keep that so you don't even have to buy RAM and then just get yourself, you know, the uh, 12700K Fs when they're on sale or even something like a 12600K or a 13600K, you'll get similar gaming performance to the 7800X3D at a significantly reduced cost, which I'll be showing on the screen here. So, alrighty guys, hope this was helpful. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video. Thanks to all the supporters for going ahead and helping me get all this stuff on hand so this way I can bring this out to you. So if you do want to join the community, once again, click the join button down below or the Patreon link in the video description that gets you access to the Discord. And if you want to see more live streams from me, you can go ahead and do so by clicking the Techonomics uh, podcast link in the video description where Paul from Not an Apple Fan and I go live once a week on Mondays uh, and we talk about like all the, the news and stuff out there and try to relate you know, back to the budget stuff, kind of what we're talking about here, just relating it to the news of the week. So uh, that gets you another live stream as well as mine that I do on Fridays. So thank you guys. That'll do it for me here today. And I will catch you guys in the next video.